Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is a laptop that you, well, can't actually buy. It's a pre-production model of what I think is going to be the new MSI Prestige 14, although you wouldn't know by looking at it because it's got this big Intel logo on the back, although uh, the box suggests otherwise, as does the fact that I reviewed this last year and it looks almost identical, but that's not important. What's important is what's on the inside and maybe being spoiled by uh, the wallpaper here, because this is running on a brand new Intel 11th gen Tiger Lake processor, the i7-1185G7 to be exact, which is a 4-core, 8-thread, 28-watt chip. So these next-gen chips will be powering most new laptops, particularly thin and light ones like this. And I think we can all agree this needs to be good because AMD have been killing it this year with their Ryzen 4000 series. And every laptop review I make, from the Dell XPS to the Huawei MateBook, there's always comments saying I wish it had an AMD Ryzen chip instead. Plus, with Apple Silicon around the corner, competition is heating up. Firstly, this is not a full review because uh, this is not a final laptop, non-final hardware and software. And as you can see, there's still one or two bugs to be ironed out. I also can't really test battery life, nor am I allowed to take off the bottom to show you the internals. So this is kind of just like a glimpse of what we might be able to expect with these new chips and why maybe if you're thinking about buying a new laptop, it may be worth just holding out a little bit longer. Now to give you some context, along with the new i7 processor, in this laptop we're getting 16 gigs of all new faster DDR4X 4266MHz RAM, as well as a 1TB PCIe 3 SSD, Wi-Fi 6, we've got a couple of new Thunderbolt 4 ports here, and it's a 14-inch 1080p touchscreen. You can also see as I open it, the keyboard lifts up to give us better airflow and cooling, which is why they've gone with the more powerful 28W version of the i7. So faster and more efficient CPUs, faster RAM, a few other extras we'll talk about in a second. But for me, the headline is this guy, Intel's new XE graphics, which they tell me should give us up to double the performance of current Ice Lake integrated chips. And it should compete with Nvidia's MX350 dedicated chip, which is pretty impressive. So whether you're photo and video editing or gaming, this should make a big difference. We also get extras like Thunderbolt 4, which is the new highest standard of USB 4, faster Wi-Fi 6 Gig Plus, and also PCIe 4 support. So with 11th Gen Tiger Lake, we'll be getting the usual range of i3, i5, and i7 chips in laptops. Most thin and light laptops will get 15 watt chips, but some with beefier cooling like this one will get the full fat 28 watt model. Now the problem is, I actually don't have a laptop with me uh, that has last year's equivalent processor, uh, the 25 watt version of Ice Lake. There were very, very few laptops that actually offered it. Uh, the main one would be the Razer Blade 13, but particularly the Mercury White edition, uh, which I didn't manage to get my hands on. But what I can do is by adjusting the Windows power mode here, best battery life limits the chip's power to 15 watts, better performance gives you a 28 watt power limit, and best performance is 28 watts with dynamic tuning. So if you have a particularly good cooling system in a laptop and it has the power headroom to do it, it can boost all the way up to 36 watts. Now I have only had a couple of days with this laptop and actually as I'm filming this, it's been collected in about two hours. So uh, I haven't got an awful lot of time, but I managed to run a few quick tests. And if we start with the 11th gen MSI laptop in best battery mode, so 15 watts, this gives us, as I say, a more realistic comparison between other 15 watt Ice Lake laptops. So if we bring in the Dell XPS 13 first, with the current 10th gen chip that this new one will replace, along with the current fastest Iris Plus graphics. Then we have the Asus Swift 3, which has the same processor as the Dell, but the much faster NVIDIA MX350 graphics chip. And finally, let's bring in a bit of AMD competition with the Ryzen 7 4800U and Vega 8 graphics. Although bear in mind this is a 25 watt CPU. So now let's switch the MSI 11th gen laptop to its 28 watt best performance boost mode. And you can see the 8 core Ryzen 7 still beats out the 4 core 11th gen chips in CPU based tests like Geekbench and Cinebench. But in TimeSpy and PCMark, which take advantage of the graphics, we're seeing a decent boost over the Ryzen. Testing games has been a little bit trickier though with some crashing issues, so it's worth taking these results with a pinch of salt. Plus we have the MSI laptop's pretty decent cooling system and also the new faster RAM, so there are some of the variables as well. But with that said, in these tests, the 11th gen chip with XE graphics came out on top in every test bar Fortnite, where the MX350 still takes the lead. Although I think a big part of that is down to driver support. The Vega 8 graphics were pretty impressive as well, but still a little bit behind the MX350. 
It's also good to see that when you uh, pull the plug, as it were, that we're still getting almost full performance from this when it's running on battery. So you can see in Time Spy, the performance is only 4% slower on battery versus when it's plugged in. So while I can't wait to get my hands on a proper retail laptop and test more games, video editing, and of course battery life, which is pretty important for these portable laptops, first impressions, Tiger Lake is shaking up to be a big upgrade, even over current Ice Lake laptops. It would have been nice to see six or maybe eight core options for the new chips, as AMD are still coming out on top in multi-core tests. But the real winner seems to be the XE graphics, and Intel's claims of double the performance over last year's Iris Plus seems to be pretty bang on. I am curious how this will perform versus Nvidia's brand new MX450 chip, and also there's questions over driver support, because in the past, Intel with games hasn't always been the best, not the most well optimized, and that's partly why Nvidia's chips, while also uh, being more powerful, have performed much better in games specifically, because the drivers have been a lot more optimized. Intel tell me that they are putting a lot more resources into this, and actually what will happen is, when you install a new game, it'll detect it, and then you'll get a new Intel driver through your usual Windows updates, which will be actually dedicated for that one game. So unlike with Nvidia or AMD graphics cards, um, you wouldn't actually need to install these big, massive patches, driver updates every month or so, uh, which covers every game, even if you're not playing it, you'll just get the ones bespoke to what you're playing on your laptop, which sounds pretty smart, actually. And I'm also looking forward to seeing laptops with PCIe 4 storage and to see USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4 become more commonplace. So these new Tiger Lake laptops will be coming out pretty soon, uh, sort of end of 2020 is the ballpark range, but I suspect we'll start seeing models uh, from October time. So depending on how quickly you need a new laptop, if you can wait a little bit, maybe a few weeks, maybe a month or so, then we will start to see these new 11th gen Tiger Lake laptops come out. Uh, and combined with you know Black Friday and the uh, holiday season and perhaps even discounts on current 10th uh, gen Ice Lake laptops as these ones start to replace them. Either way, whether you're looking to get a brand new 11th gen or a discounted old one, I think it could be worth waiting uh, to buy a new laptop if you can, particularly if graphics performance is really important to you. If not, then there's still loads of great laptops out there right now. So what do you reckon? Do you think Tiger Lake will be enough to tempt you to upgrade your laptop? Let me know in the comments below. And if you do want to see more laptop videos from me, reviews, buying guides, then make sure you do hit that little subscribe button down below so you don't miss out. And I'll see you guys next time right here on the Tech Chat.